Uh, talk our next is by unit. So let's give him a big DEF CON 30 welcome. Come on. Hello, everyone. My name is Janusz Czernika, and I will be presenting the anonymization of Tor HTTP hidden services. So, I will have an introduction about Tor, then, I will speak about known uh, anonymization techniques, then, how downgrading the HTTP protocol can leak the IP, other techniques developed by me, then, how to fix these issues because it's a configuration issues, then, demo time and closing remarks. Who am I? I'm an application security engineer. I am working for UiPath. This is my own research, personal research. Uh, CTF player, PhD student, security researcher, former bug bounty hunter, and former entrepreneur. The Onion router, known as Tor, helps you to anonymize on the internet and helps you to reach the dark net where you can find the hidden services and that uh, URL that ends in onion. Dot onion. A hidden service allows users to publish their services and um, it hides their identity uh, on the internet, on the Tor network and the internet. Configuration, a basic configuration is when you declare a service directory where the Tor configuration files will go, then the service port for, for the network. Then when you restart the server service, you will have a URL like a long URL dot onion for your hidden service. Known anonymization techniques are server status, key certificate, uh, another anonymization technique is search for the onion address, or the gzip deflate. This is not an um, anonymization, it helps you to make a, I don't know, uh, to, to make an idea where the server is located, in what, which country. File icon hash, and if you are skilled enough, maybe you can hack the server. So the server status technique implies to uh, it's it's only a, on a Apache 2 web Apache 2 web servers, and uh, when you go to server status, maybe they didn't disable because it's enabled by default on web servers like on the Apache web servers, and maybe on the virtual host you'll find a public IP or a public domain which you can visit and see in, on the server status of the Tor hidden service. The key certificate implies that you can take uh, uh, parameters like serial number or so on and you can look for them on Shodan which uh, indexes information from the internet including the TLS information like serial number and uh, maybe you can catch the, uh, maybe the, the, the hidden services use the same TLS certificate on the internet and you can make a match. You also be, okay, it's not a big chance of success, but uh, you can um, search for the onion address on the internet and you can search on searching engines like Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, or Shodan. You, you deserve a try. The GZIP, uh, GZIP compression, it's about uh, to gives you gives you an idea where the server is located and uh, Jose Car Carlos found it and uh, he said that around 10% of the web servers uh, leak the remote date when compressing HTTP responses. The five icon um, is that tiny uh, icon from the URL bar and um, it is possible to make a hash of it and uh, then try to, to search it on Shodan. Maybe some other uh, website is using and uh, an example for this is the quantum ransomware group which uh, were de-anonymized on Tor because they used the, the fav icon on the internet and Talos found its equivalent on the internet. Or hack the servers with a remote command execution local file or make a research on the server, maybe you'll find something that leaks the IP. So downgrading the protocol, how did I find this? Um, some strange requests were in my access logs, something like get slash not found a long not found not found not found exactly like this and uh, it ends with http 1.0 the protocol with a 400 bad request and uh, mascan in the user agent were was mascan and for more information it gave me a website where to go and read more information about this scan 
So when I entered on that website, it was about a university from Germany, which they said they scan all the internet, and uh, they tried to find something they didn't, they didn't reveal what they are, were looking for. But um, this behavior keep coming for days on my server. Also, I was seeing this behavior on my honeypots, and I was thinking to dump the whole request to see what's going on there because it's strange to see such request and what they, they are looking for. So when I, I dumped their request, the whole request, I was thinking they have an exploit in the header and the access log doesn't have the parameters in headers in the, in the log file. Uh, I replicated and uh, I saw that uh, one of my virtual hosts was publicly revealed in the response server. And this was a, th I realized that this have a big potential on Tor or even in the internet because you can find unknown uh, on or un un unpublished uh, uh, domains, virtual domains from an IP. So why this, be uh, why this behavior, behavior? So it's not a security problem in Apache based servers like um, uh, Apache 2, Nginx or Tomcat. It's all about configuration. <clears throat> the server must choose one of the domains to forward uh, the request. So if you downgrade the protocol to 1.0, you don't need the host header anymore and you can erase it from your request. So the server will choose the first virtual domain from the configuration file. And in the response, you'll find the, the, the IP or maybe something that doesn't help you, maybe localhost. So the leak is in the trigger exceptions, like 400 bad requests, 400, 403 forbidden, or even in 404 not found uh, sometimes. But the best way to leak the IP is uh, in server redirects. You have to trigger a redirect on the server on something else. And uh, this wor is working on Nginx, Apache 2, and Tomcat. And it's very easy to trigger a redirect on every server. Um, don't f now, I just want to show you how the response is when you, we try to, to go to slash.html. So it's a 403 forbidden. We have that server at uh, my onion domain. It's a big one and dot onion in the end. And if I remove the host header and I downgrade the protocol, now I have my IP leaked. So I just leak my IP. With 400 bad requests long header, uh, via long header. If you put a long header enough, you trigger the, the bad request. And as well, we have the IP address in the response, server at my, my real IP address. Again, the result with a long URL, like the university from Germany I said earlier, they did with the long URL. It's triggering a bad request. Maybe that's why, I don't know, maybe that's why they are, they, they are doing, they were doing this, or a file upload that exceeds the server limits. There are other ways to do that, to trigger a bad request, you just have to find other ways. Uh, the 403 forbidden is triggered when you visit something with slash dot ht. That's because the default configuration file of Apache tries to, to protect files like ht access or ht password, so you, you can easily trigger this 403 forbidden and you downgrade the protocol, remove the host header, then you have the server at with something in there. Maybe a local host or something that, that doesn't uh, helps you or the, the public IP maybe. Uh, the server redirects, the best way to trigger, uh, the server redirects is the best way to, to find out the primary virtual host. And an example is like if you have a, a a di directory that exists on the root of the server, you can try to visit it without the, the last slash, and the server will auto redirect to the, to the same directory but with a slash at the final. So, in most cases, you can find a directory on the first HTML page of the web server. Maybe you are dealing with an API server and you don't, you don't have directories, but uh, you can use the predefined directories from Apache server like CSS, icons, GS, and uh, these directories are av available only if you visit from the local host IP. And in Tor, most of the hidden services are visited with the local host. To trigger the redirect, look at the, as I said, you look on the, on the, on the source code of the HTML, you find the directory like CSS in this case, and uh, then you try to 
to trigger the redirect, like get slash CSS without the, the, the last slash. The server tries to correct this, this and puts a slash at the, the, at the end, but uh, redirects to, 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 your, to your virtual host, the primary virtual host, because I already downgraded the, the protocol. So applying this on internet, maybe you can find important information. If you are a sysadmin, you have to be careful how you configure your, your virtual hosts. Uh, I didn't make a research on this because, I don't know, I, I'm at the limit of legality. It appears that others did this before, but I don't know if they followed this problem with the downgraded of, pro of protocol. So I expect to exfiltrate domains that normally you cannot get from an IP. It's kind of DNS reserve, uh, uh, reverse. Uh, another technique uh, it would be the ETAG e -tag from the response header. You can take its value and if the first page is a static page, maybe you can look for it on the Shodan search engine. Another an example of ETAG, you can see I make a request on the first page uh, on the slash and uh, and um, their server responds with the ETAG and it's a unique value. You should not find this on other servers, only if the same, it's a, I don't know, it's a VMware image or something. Other techniques, same network techniques, uh, implies that uh, you have an onion, you try to, you try to, to de-anonymize it, you d didn't find anything, but uh, you have a list of uh, all the onions, all the ones, a lot of onions from the Tor network, and you try to replace the host header with each each one at a time with uh, the uh, which with the every onion address from your list, and maybe one of them will respond as you would uh, w you would request at uh, that onion. So this implies this uh, uh, can help you to increase the the attack surface. You don't need to attack the first onion. Maybe you can try to de-anonymize de the second one. So right now I'll put the demo. At the end of the demo I have something very, very uh, an impressive finding. So right now I'm trying to access an HT anything to see that uh, I can trigger the 403 forbidden, but I have the HTTP 1.1 with the host header of my onion address on Tor. Now if I remove the host header, ah okay, now I'm, I'm showing you that I don't want to make a lot of noise, so I put a H, dot .html, not a b re really big uh, URL like not found, not found, not found how others did. And uh, if I remove the host header and I downgrade the protocol, you can find a hidden domain on my web server. And maybe that domain is publicly available, you can come from the internet on it and you can uh, disclose its IP. Now I tr I'm trying to trigger a bad request by, uh, imp by uh, putting a long header. So I'll put a long, long header to trigger the 400 bad requests and the response will be the same server at and the address. So the, the server at hidden, hidden domain.ml. Another technique is the, as I said, is the redirect technique. So the CSS directory should be, should be available by default on Apache servers, but only if you visit it from the local host. And right now, if I visit with my HTTP 1.1 protocol with the host header, it redirects me to the onion address. So nothing was leaked. If I remove the, the line and I downgrade the protocol now, in the response again, we have the domain leaked. So hidden domain.ml. So right now, what I can do it, I'm going to find out more about this domain. Let's take its uh, IP address, make a who is on it, and maybe it's public from the internet. That's what I tr I'm trying to do right now. And after that, I'm trying to, to, to see if uh, this public address is really hosting the Tor hidden service. So 
I'm looking at the e tag. It, re it responds from the, I, I came from the internet and it has an e tag. If I go, I'm going back to the Tor network in the next few seconds, you'll see that it has the same e tag. And in the end, I will show that the server status will will uh, show me that there is the same server for this onion and uh, the IP address I visited. Okay, I'll go to the uh, uh, last demo. It's from here, so. I'm right now I configured the hidden domain.ml so this is another configuration I configured the hidden domain uh, in in front of uh, so I have the in front of hidden domain the cloudflare so I'm trying to leak the IP address uh, of a cloud uh, cloud domain of a cloudflare domain so I just try to even I don't I don't downgrade the downgrade the protocol for the long header exception, just for the long header exception, it will, will it will serve me the first virtual host uh, from the configuration file. So I can leak the IP address of the server which is protected by Cloudflare. This is not a problem in Cloudflare, it's just a problem on the configuration, it, in, either it's not a problem in Apache 2 server, it's just a problem in the way we configure the virtual host of uh, our web servers. So right now I'm trying to to insert a long header and we'll see what's happening. This is a default configuration. So I installed Apache, I put Cloudflare, then just I put a virtual host and then I just uh, send a long header and w let's see what's happening. Look, I just leak my IP address. So now maybe it's uh, open for direct requests. I don't need the Cloudflare anymore. No, no. <laughs> so, in conclusion, triggering bad requests or uh, 403 forbidden and so on, maybe can leak the IP address of uh, your Apache server. You have to choose very carefully what virtual host you configure. Uh, even on Cloudflare this doesn't help you. It's not a problem in Cloudflare. It's a problem in how you, you configure the virtual host. Try to not reuse the certificates from other projects uh, and disable the server status when you, ac you give access to other persons to access your server from local host. And Thank you. I'm waiting for your questions. <laughs>